The electors shall meet in their respective states and vote by ballot for president and vice president, one of whom at least shall not be an inhabitant of the same state with themselves. They shall name in their ballots the person voted for as president and is in distinct ballots the person voted for as vice president. And they shall make distinct lists of all persons voted for as president and all persons voted for as vice president and the number of votes for each, which list they shall sign and certify and transmit sealed to the seat of the government of the United States directed to the president of the Senate. The president of the Senate shall in the presence of the Senate and the House of Representatives open all the certificates and the votes shall then be counted. This is the 12th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, the person having the greatest number of votes for president shall be the president if such number be a majority of the whole number of electors appointed. And if no person have such majority, then from the persons having the highest numbers not exceeding three on the list of those voted for as president, the House of Representatives shall choose immediately by ballot the president. But in choosing the president, the votes shall be taken by states. The representation from each state having one vote a quorum for this purpose shall consist of a member or members from two-thirds of the states and the majority of all the states shall be necessary to a choice. And if the House of Representatives shall not choose a president, whenever the right of choice shall devolve upon them before the fourth day of March next following, then the vice president shall act as president as in the case of the death or constitutional disability of the president. The Person having the greatest number of votes as vice president shall be the vice president if such number be a majority of the whole number of electors appointed. Da 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 da. Okay, so that's about the vice president. But the Twelfth Amendment is going to change the rules for the Electoral College. You had that 1801 debacle, and you've actually before they would just vote for two. It wasn't specific, so just vote for one guy, vote for another guy. They would add up the totals, and then the number one would be president, number two would be vice president. Now they specifically ask you to vote for the president, vote for the vice president. So the Twelfth Amendment is going to change the rules for the Electoral College. The Electoral College, it comes out of Article 2, Section 1, Clause 3. So the first four presidential elections had the old rules, and then every presidential election after that has the new rules. The Twelfth Amendment is going to change the Electoral College rules, and since 1804, so for over 200 years, 220-something years, Every American election has been governed by the 12th Amendment. Now, this means that Cornell West can become president.